Hello, welcome back to Go on the Run, and this is K Kubernetes Service Part 6. And today I want to look at something very specific, and that is K3D, the thing we're using to create our Kubernetes cluster, node port mapping. How to map a port on a node, as in K3D, to your machine. This is similar to how we would map ports from um, Docker, for example, to our local machine so we can use it, right? Well, this is specific to K3D. If you had, like I said in the previous video, if you had real machines, either they're bare metal or VMs, so for the most part, VMs are going to look like real machines, and you deploy Kubernetes on it, you wouldn't have this issue. So let's now start once again with a blank slate and say we have a Kubernetes cluster. And for us, a Kubernetes cluster is a set of nodes and some pods. Of course, that's why we're doing Kubernetes. And of course, we know that we're going to have services because we want to be able to leverage load balancing um, and using our pods. So we're never going to create a pod now without a service. Like why? Even if it's one pod alone that we want to run, we just want to have use the service in front of it. So just in case we ever um, need to scale it up, just for the same reason we said we're not going to create a pod directly, we'll just use a deployment to create our pods because they're so similar, why not use it? It gives you that safeguard also in case you ever need to scale. So I'm not going to draw the lines that pod A is talking to which set of pod. It doesn't matter, right? Because they could be on any node, they could move around. Similar with pod B, I'm not going to draw those lines. Too many lines, and you guys have seen this already. But I at least want you to have some visualization of what's going on. But we do know that each service has their own IP address. And in order to access it, they need to be running on a, um, or have a port open. And the port is going to redirect you to, you know, that's pod that's exposed, or, um, that's connected to. Now, a service, because of that IP address, can have multiple ports open. So I don't want to say a service only has one port open. So remember that within a pod, you can have multiple containers running. So let's say your pod had an Redis container, and it's exposing a port, and an Nginx is exposing a port, and maybe our counter service is exposing a port. Those would be three ports from the one pod because there are multiple containers running that pod. Of course, you're scaling up the pods, multiple pods, so the services hide in all that, the number of pods and load balancing, but you still might have multiple ports open on a service. The next thing is that since we want to expose our service, let's say we're doing node port. So that means on every node, we must have a port open. Now, one of the things I mentioned, and I showed you when we did this in a previous video, is that once you use a node port, Kubernetes pick a port number between you know, 32,767. That's what it uses. You Don't worry about changing it. Don't worry anything too hard. That's just what it uses. And it randomly picks a port. As you, could, as you remember, if you go back to the previous video, every time I change the node port type and I rebuild the service, recreate the service, that port number change. But once it's there, it's allocated so long as the service doesn't die or get destroyed and recreated. Okay. So how then do we then access this on our local machine? That's what we're talking about. Well, remember, our cluster, our Kubernetes cluster, is actually running within Docker. It's not out on the network. It's not up in AWS or Google Cloud or Azure or one of those other places. It's not on our network because we have a, three machines that we sit out on our machines or three VMs somewhere and we install Kubernetes. This is actually in Docker. But where is Docker running? Docker is running on your machine, the machine that hopefully you're using. And instead of it's a separate machine, it's still running in that machine, whether it's a Mac, Linux, or Windows. So Docker is running there. But Docker is just an application. So your browser an application. So if your browser, you wanted your browser to be able to use your service that's running inside Kubernetes, you somehow really need to have a port open on your Mac or whatever machine you're using so that now your browser can use that port and then that port is also tied to one of the nodes in your um, cluster. But notice you only need to read one of the nodes because we saw that once you have node port going for your service, your service is a type node port, just connecting to that one port gives you the load balancing. You know, we're not gonna draw more lines to show it. But we know this work already. That's what we, the whole previous video was about. So now all we really need to figure out is how can we, because KD3D is the one that's allowing us to run a cluster within Docker. 
So we want to be able to say, okay, how can K3D allow us to map a port on our computer to a one of these nodes? And so that's what we're going to do. And then once we do that, now we're going to be used to, able to use our browser or anything else. You, you know, the browser is just an application. So we can use curl. If you're me using HTTPIE or, you know, WGET, whatever is on our machine, our local machine, we can then use that to talk to our um, cluster. So we don't have to actually go onto a node and use Docker like we did before, Docker exec. So let's see how we do this. Now keep this in mind. There are a lot of ports here. I don't even show the ports on the pod because again, you, you should know by now that the service is going to tie to that, right? You can just look at this service configuration and you see it has the target port, which is the port on the pod, and then there's the service port itself. So right now, our service port is set to 8080. I am going to, instead of, um, you know, Kubernetes giving me a random port number between 30,000 and 32,768, 67, I am actually going to tell it I want for my service, I want it to use the port number 31,080. So I'm going to say that that's my number for my node port. By specifying that number, I am able to tell K3D that, oh, I want you to map port 1080 on my Mac to port number 31080 on a specific node. And so if you remember, when we build a K3D cluster, we have the server and then we have a bunch of agents. So for this example, I'm just going to simply use the server. But you can use a gate. You can use any one of the nodes because we did that already. We've been through. I'm just going to keep it simple. So now let's jump to the command line and see how I can tell K3D, when you're creating the cluster, I want you to map port 1080 on my machine to port 31080 on the server node within this KHS cluster. After my service is up, my cluster is up and so on, I'm going to create my deployment and my service and tell it then that I want port 80 of the service to be mapped to port 31,000 of a node port. Okay? A lot going on there, but please replay this. Take some time, look at the previous videos, blah, blah, blah. And of course, try to yourself and try to understand. Okay. Let's go to the command line. So I'm going to copy part four to five, because in part four, as you saw, we, if you remember, we changed the service type to node port. And then we need to make some configuration to specify that we actually want to use port 3180 instead. So let me show you how we do it. And then I have to recreate my Kubernetes cluster, but at least let me show you that I can make this be the number I want. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to CD into part five and then clean up. And then um, let's um, get our VS code. Um, so I'm going to make sure that our VS code is pointing to the right one. So I'm going to say code, in this directory, part five. And here's my service. And so notice the type is node port from before. And once I have a node port type, I can specify for this port. Now notice how this says ports. That's because your service could have multiple ports, like I said. You can even name them. So we could name this guy, um, you know, the 8080 port. I don't know. Let's call it um, service port 8080. And then you give the port that says this is what the port is going to be exposed on in the service, and this is the target. Now, if I have multiple, um, containers running within my pod, right? I do, I do not have multiple containers running within my pod, but if I did, um, then notice how each one of my containers would have their own name and the port that they're running on. So let's imagine that an Nginx um, running on port, I don't know, 443. Then what I can do is then say, okay, this is my service there. This is my Nginx on 443, for example, that's the name I give it. And then I can say, well, the port on the service might be 8443 if I want, but then the target port for the Nginx within to that container is 443. We don't always have to use the same 
port number. It just sometimes makes things a little bit easier. So anyway, so I can name each port. Well, we don't have multiple ports, so I'm going to take that out. But what I can do, though, is I can say that the node port, this is the node port. This is 31080, right? For this particular port that I'm configuring, and so the main, each and every single port you configure, you can give it, just like you could give the name and target port, you can give it a node, um, node port. So I'm going to come back here and let's clean up and let's rerun. So remember, we're running kubectl apply. And we run with everything in this directory. And you can see the only thing that changed is this number. It went from 30,750 to now 31080. So that means that I can affect and specify what that number is. So now that we know how to um, make it the number we want, if you remember from my diagram, I said that oh, if each node has this number or is going to use this number, then I can map my map, my Mac port 1080 to this port number, but I knew I need K3D to do it for me. So how do I get K3D to do it? Well, what I need to do is delete the existing cluster that I have. I didn't show you how I created this cluster, so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and recreate it. So I'm gonna do K3D cluster delete. And so this is gonna delete this particular K3D cluster. I could have created a different cluster with a different name, but I don't need all those stuff running right now, so Let's do K3D cluster create. And normally I would create my cluster like this, one server and three agents. That's why I, I would have four you know, nodes. But I want to do minus P to say port. Again, this is like um, Docker, where we say minus P to map a port on my local machine to a port in that container that I'm talking about. And so which thing am I talking about? I'm saying connect to the server colon one. So that's some label, and this is how just how um, K3D does it. If you want to go to one of the agents, you just change this to agent zero, agent one, agent two. In this case, since we have three agents, it started out with zero, one, two. I only have one server, so that's it's gonna be server zero. But again, you could map to any one. And please try this with you know disconnect, recreate your cluster, map to um, something else and and you'll see okay so now this is going to open up port 1080 on my computer I could prove this to you by doing this while true try to connect to lo local port 1080 and I run this and you can see connection fail there's nothing run on my local machine this is on my Mac um, I can also go here to my web browser and you can see I already have localhost 1080 Refresh, there's nothing there. Okay, so now if I do this and I run and I create that cluster, up there you should come you should see when the cluster is created. And you can see that still nothing is, is running. Like the port is gonna be open, but connection is still gonna be refused because there's nothing behind it. Um, so let's let's this finish. Okay, notice how that it changes a little bit now. So the port is mapped to my computer. It's mapped into K3D cluster, but there's no service that's mapped to, so it's still failing. Okay, so connection aborted. Notice how that message changed from before. All right, and so if I go here and I reload, you see waiting, and then you know it, it failed. So the message changed a little bit. Okay, so that's done. Now I still need to create my service. So um, let's do this. But remember, if for me to create my service, I have to what? Have it imported into my K3D cluster. Why do I need to import it? The image is because this deployment I'm using is using our own application, and we went through this already. To make it available in my K3D cluster, I have to do K3D image import, and I must import that image from Docker. So we did all this already. So nothing new here. Just Getting everything situated so that I can actually do Q CTL apply and now I run and create everything. What's gonna happen? Look at this. Notice all port 3180, and then notice what's happening here. Everything is working now. If I go to my browser, so bam, this worked, and if I keep refreshing it, 
if you look at me refreshing, and I'll use Command R here to keep refreshing my screen, and you notice that the server is not changing. So why is it not changing here, but it's changing in the command line? The difference is in the command line, I'm using a while loop, which means make a request and exit that application, make another request. So each time I make a request, that's a new session. And therefore, and so it might point it to a different server based on whatever logic it's using to connect. But here from the browser, the browser has a session and that information is being sent each time I make a request. And so the load balancer is seeing that information and is going, oh, I'm gonna say to the same server, um, since you are using that server, I don't want you to be bouncing around from server to server. There's no need for that. Maybe that server, you know, that pod, it doesn't, right? That is providing you the application that's running in that container that you're talking to, that I send you to first, you still want to be talking to the exact one. And so unless something goes down that we have to move you, there's no reason to actually move you. Just wanted to explain why you might not be seeing, why you're not seeing that stuff bounce around, which is you wouldn't want for a web application anyway. Um, it's okay for a good demonstration to show that it's scale from using the command line, but your web browser, you, you want it to be pinned to whatever um, application was serving it unless it needs to move for any other reason. Okay, that's it. Um, let's wrap up. All right, that's it. I don't want to make this too long. Hopefully that shows you now that we can access our service externally um, on our machine, whatever machine we're using. If you made it this far and you're not subscribed, please, I'd love to have your subscription. Consider subscribing. For those who are already subscribed and returning, thank you again for coming back and thanks for subscribing. And stay safe. See you in the next video. Let me know if you have questions or something didn't work for you. Bye.